Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is Trading Simplified. So what are we talking about? Well, I want to talk about the methodology in action. I think that's probably one of the most important things that we do to actually show real trades and what we're doing with this methodology, trend following, short to intermediate term. Trend following, swing trade to intermediate term, is for as profit taken, and I'll flesh that out in one second. One thing that I have to be careful of is social media can really kind of wear you down. And, and I think it's because all the get-rich gurus out there have really trained everybody to, to be super, super, super skeptical. And, and basically, what I'm doing is, is common sense and very straightforward. There's no, there's no magic to it, and I don't pretend that there's any magic to it. They were complaining that I might have been cherry-picking the trades that I'm showing. And I do show quite a few losses, as you know. It's just that there's a lot more to learn from riding out a trend longer term than there is from just honoring your stop as you should. You have to really work to follow that plan. In fact, I'm gonna be talking to a client in a couple days who's super duper successful in life, but he's having trouble in trading following the plan. And I think the more we, we walk through these trades, the better off you'll be to see how this thing works, good, bad, and ugly, and where the real money is. And again, we'll get to that in just one second. So what I said was I will show my next 100 trades and I want to update you and I had some new thoughts on how I'm going to show you these trades, what, which ones I'm going to show. And that'll make sense in just one second. Again, we have a new mystery chart this week, follow up on a couple of old ones, and then we have a new one which might become part of the next 100 trades. And I am working in order, or at least I have an alert in place, to short this stock since the market is kind of on the cusp of rolling back over, I wanted to do a brief 10% system update. And I wanted to also do a little bit of trading psychology, a bit of a crash course there. And again, that'll make sense in one second. Housekeeping, I do take requests. It makes my job a lot easier knowing what I'm going to cover. You could send those to davelander.com slash contact. Due to the recorded nature of this show and the limited time, and, and schedule, it might be easier for me to cover your questions in my weekly webinar, Dave Landry's The Week at Charts. You can register for that at davelandry.com slash webinar. Also, if you need the slides from this presentation and all my other presentations combined, you can go, you can go to davelandry.com slash stock charts. I'll also give you enough goodies to keep you busy for a long, long time. You can reach me on Twitter at Dave Landry, T-R-D-R. I need a work on getting a better Twitter handle. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology in action. Here we have a mystery chart reveal, and it's DKS. You can see it was in a gradual kind of rollover. It began to accelerate lower, and then had a nice little deep pullback. And there's your parameters right there. Entry of 76, protective stop of 90, IPT of 62, 14 points, but that's what it calls for. Fairly volatile stock at high levels and also a higher price stock. And in order to try to ride out a short-term move in this stock, you're just going to have to give it plenty of, of breathing room. It is what it is, but only 143 shares, and that's based on a 100K account. So the entries here, stops up here, and initial profit target is down here. Let's see what happened. As you can see, it did trigger an entry, but I actually pulled this off my trading service before it triggered. Well, Dave, why did you do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. It ended up going a little bit over two weeks without triggering, and I just felt like if this thing was gonna break down in earnest, it should probably break down sooner rather than later. On the short side, or I should say, especially on the short side, if a market's really going to implode, I'd like to see it trigger fairly soon. So that's why I decided to pull this stock. By the way, if you wanna see these in somewhat real time, I guess a little bit of a delay, you can go to DaveLeonard.com slash archives and see everything warts and all. And that's probably what I should have just done instead of <laughs> walking through this next 100 trades, which has me a little bit nervous. It's What's that Heisenberg theory of quantum physics? When you observe something, you kind of change the observations. And now I'm finding myself a little stressed out that I'm actually reporting these trades when the reality is I've been reporting these trades all along through the trading archives. Anyway, trading service archives. Now the mystery chart reveal this week. This was a bow tie. Notice that this stock went down for a long, long, long time. 
bottomed out nicely, cup and handle bottom, double bottom, pick your favorite classical technical analysis pattern, it's probably there. Nice little thrust higher from lows, big change in trend. Also, we had a bow tie, so this thing was shaping up to look like it was ready to double or more. But let's take a look at what happened. Entry was here, and it came really close to triggering an entry. And this is why, of course, we like to wait for an entry. Waiting for an entry many times will keep you from putting capital in the harm's way unnecessarily. IPT was up here, and the stop, as you can see, down below. So the stock was UDMI. Now let's take a look at what happened. Notice that it continued to pull back, and it no longer had upside momentum. It pulled back from where it broke out from. So I decided to pull this setup, and notice that it didn't trigger anyway, even if you left those orders working up around 15. And one other thing, not that this will always happen, but notice that it bow tied back to the downside. Not that you want to short it or anything, but you do, as a general statement, want to stay on the right side of the bow tie. And I'll show you one here in just one second that'll make a little more sense. In fact, let's take a look at that now. Here's our new mystery chart. Notice that it was in a nice longer term uptrend and then began to roll over fairly sharply. Two patterns here. One is what I call a first thrust, and that's when you get a strong thrust lower from all-time highs or a strong thrust higher from all-time lows or at least multi-year lows, sort of like that UDMY we just talked about did. And then, as you can see, a little pullback in here. So we're looking to play that pullback. Notice that the bowtie moving averages came together and then began to separate, given the, the appearance of a bow tie. The bowtie moving averages are 10 simple, 20 exponential, and 30 exponential. By the way, if you go to the ACP platform, there is an indicator, or as I like to call it, an illustrator, that will show you what side of the market or what side the market is on based on the bow tie moving averages. And it's a pretty cool little indicator if I say so myself, or I should say illustrator. But anyway, it went from 10 greater than 20, greater than 30, which would be green in the illustrator, to 10 less than 20, less than 30 over a fairly short period of time, given the appearance of a bow tie. Made a higher low and a higher high, and that completes the pattern. We just need a one bar pullback, sometimes a higher low and a big wide range bar down, or at least when the day before is a big wide range bar down. It's okay, a little bit more risky, but sometimes it'll get you in a little bit earlier. The market barely rallies, and before everyone knows it, it begins to crash in earnest, and you're already short. Unfortunately, you probably will get stopped out a little bit more on those. If you're newer to trading something like the bow ties, go ahead and wait for a higher low and a higher high. Here's a setup here, as you can see, sell short, entry of 31, stop at 38, IPT of 24. Should this trigger, this will be my next trade in my next 100 trades. And again, we'll get to that in one second. Entries there, stops up here, just in case we're wrong, and IPT is down here. This stock looks like it's in a lot of trouble. Speaking of my next 100 trades, what I want to do is zero hindsight, and initially, I really wanted to just take these straight from the trading service, but I also realized that might take a while, so I also allowed post to Dave Landry's Trend Traders, which is my Facebook group. By the way, you have to be a gold member, uh, at least, of DaveLandry.com or a member of the trading service. I want to see people have a little skin in the game, and I also want everybody to be up to speed on the methodology. By being a gold member, you have access to the courses and a lot of other good stuff. So at least I know everybody's on the same page. If you have questions, and nine out of 10 times, I can reference you back to some material that's in one of the courses. Or usually, to my surprise, many of my members will chime in with the correct answers. Now, of course, warts and all, there's gonna be some good stuff and bad stuff. So far, there's been a little bit of both, but not necessarily as much good stuff as I want. And what I'm showing is a representative sample. There's other things that I do in trading that really won't lend themselves to this, but I really want to focus mostly on the core methodology and mostly on the trading service. And that's something that I've been thinking about lately. And I've showed a couple other other intraday trades here. And I want to get back to focusing mostly on the core methodology because I think that's the most 
repeatable. And by the way, repeatability is probably one of the, if not the most important thing when it comes to following someone. Years ago, as part of a website, we were one of the first websites out there. I think it was us and Market Watch providing market commentary. And we had a day trader, and he was making like 50 trades a day in the S&P futures. And I'm sure he was good at what he did, but it was driving the clientele crazy trying to follow him. So his repeatability, at least from where I sit, it would have been hard for me to follow him too, is just a little bit too rough. Whereas my setups, like, hey, get in here, put a stop here, put an IPT here, sit back and relax, I know, ha-ha, and let it all unfold, is a lot more repeatable than let's get in. And while by the time you're getting in, they're already getting out. Anyway, that's a subject for another day. So here's the trades. And then one of my observations so far is the opportunity cost was at least 3500 and possibly a little bit more because I missed a really good trade that would have really lent itself well to what I want to show with these 100 trades. And of course, it would have taken care of this big spanking in here. It happens, spelled with a silent SH <laughs> for what it's worth. But anyway, I'm going to focus more at least for a while until we get a couple of big winners under our belt on the IPO stuff and the core methodology because that's probably most repeatable and then maybe after that I will show some of these ogre type of trades because that's also repeatable too but I like to get a couple of big winners under my belt so the point I'm making here is there's no where the money is core trend trades yet and by where the money is as I talked about a couple of weeks ago when I last did a show that's capturing the 100 200 300 and in rare cases but it happens it can happen 500 or 600 percent more moves and that's where the real money is so this is based on a hypothetical 100k portfolio there's always 100k in the portfolio there's no compounding or anything just to make math easy so based on this mark here which we're a little bit better right now so this number would be a little bit better but that's a 17 percent gain round numbers on the account and this is what makes it all worthwhile you occasionally get 17 to 20 percent or more on a big winner and that covers a lot of these losing trades such as this one right here even though it's not a core trade, but you get the idea. So as you can see, nice little trade there. Not part of this 100 trades because that happened. That triggered about uh, almost two years ago, at least a year and a half ago. So, so far so good there. Knock on wood. It's actually a coal stock. Okay, based on the return of weakness or the appearance of return of weakness in the market, plus the lack of really any seriously meaningful rally, as you know, or may know, in bear markets, you could have some pretty serious rallies and the market's still in trouble. But I wanted to do a brief update. And I had some random thoughts on this too. First of all, the sell signal for this is just one close below the buy line, which is simply 10% below the 52 week closing high. And we're gonna use a weekly chart and a close below the 50 week moving average. So you see we had a sell here both of those things happened back in March, and then both of those things happen again back in April. Now, in between, we did have a buy signal. I didn't even realize, as I said quite a bit, it was a buy signal because you had really have to squint your eyes to see that the low was above the moving average. Remember, to buy it, you not only have to be above the moving average and above the buy line, okay? You also have to have two consecutive lows above the 50-week moving average. And that's the whole system right there in a nutshell. Now, the designer's intent was to buy on strength. And again, we didn't have any daylight that you really could see with the naked eye, at least. And then also notice that the stock market had already begun to implode. So in a case like this, I would be more inclined to buy on strength, maybe wait for one week to close higher, provided, of course, two weeks lows were still greater than the moving average. Somebody did, by the way, email me. I'm like, hey, Dave, how can you talk about that buy? I took that buy and I lost money. Again, the designer's intent was to buy on strength. But it's okay if this, in this gentleman's case, I said, congratulations. If you're following the system, then by all means, follow the system. I'm a discretionary trader. This is just one of the tools that I use to help me time the market. Now, I don't 
Again, I'd follow it directly, but I do in some cases follow it a little bit more closely, such as, I'll give you a case in point, I'm not really a longer term investor, so to speak, although I will hold positions for years, and I'll show you that ARLP trade in a few minutes. I let that swing trade occasionally and hopefully turn into a long term winner. But in one case, because people always say, you have no long term investments, you gotta be kidding me. I'm like, no, not really. Now I did realize that in a very small way, I, I do have some a longer term investment, so to speak, at least a couple of those. My daughters have a little money left over from college and instead of keeping them in the market all the time, I do a little indexing. It's like I'm, I'm afraid to get too active with that money just in case they call me up and want a down payment on a house or something like that, looking for their money. But what, I'll, what I will do is when I see a sell signal in this system, I'll get them out of the way. And they've been out just for what it's worth since last March. But anyway, you can see here we his, here was the last sell signal we tried to say, close below the buy line. And the designer's intent with this, me being the designer, was to avoid these diaper change moments. And that's something that I stole from Ian McCaffrey. A uh, super, super nice guy. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us, as I joked before. Poor guy. I guess i got to quit saying this. But he was my canary in a coal mine. He wasn't a heavy drinker, but he did drink a little beer here and there. But he was a heavy smoker. He was sort of my canary in a coal mine. I'm thinking, like, as long as he's alive, I think I'm going to probably be okay with a lifestyle somewhat of moderation. And unfortunately, he's no longer with us, so that's got me a little nervous. Anyway, I shouldn't be saying those horrible things. And he was a wonderful, wonderful guy. And, and I'm going to get a little... Uh, for the Klimt, if I talk about him too much. Anyway, uh, the byline. I just want to take a second to, to to reiterate what this is. So we made a 52-week closing high right before the beginning of the year. And you can see we did make a new all-time high at the beginning of the year. But we're going off a closing high here. And this line here is just 90% of that. And then we did, in more recent times, make this parameter adjustable. But for the S&P 500... We leave it at 10% below or 90% of the 52-week closing high. Now, the thing to realize is for that line to catch up with the market, and I woke up thinking about this the other day, something I was like, I knew, but I realized that I better tell you guys about it. The market would actually have to start going down for an entire year before that buy line would start to catch up to price. So... We had a sell right before the pandemic kicked in in earnest. And what amazed me here was that this sell signal kicked in before some of my daily sell signals kicked in. And I never dreamed when I designed this system several years ago that this thing would actually kick in sometime before a daily signal. So it is a nice little thing to look at. And it's price based to where if the price itself on a slide could trigger an entry fairly quickly, as I learned in this particular case. Anyway, notice that we did get a buy signal back here. The buy line never did go down with the market because there wasn't enough time. The market didn't go down for a year. And that's one thing I never really thought about when I initially designed this system, but I really love the way it would help you to avoid those diaper change moments. Now, you could say, well, Dave, isn't this a whipsaw? You got out, and then you're getting back in higher. And the answer is yes, but you did avoid a really serious diaper change, as you could see. This thing dropped 28% from that sell signal. Now, I had some friends who held on for dear life, and believe me, when they lost another 30% of their money, especially after I tried to explain to them we had a sell signal, they were they were hurting pups, and they weren't sleeping at night, and, and thank God for them, it came back, but I can promise you it won't always come back, especially this fast. Sometimes it could take, oh, I don't know, 25 years, believe it or not, and people laugh at me when I say that. Don't take my word for it. Go in and look at the charts like I wrote in the Layman's Guide to Trading Stocks. By the way, you can get the book for free. Go to that aforementioned link, daylearn.com slash stock charts. And again, with all the goodies I'll send you, that'll be one of the things that I'll send. Now, if we get back to the buy line and go back to 2008, 2009, you have to look back 52 weeks before this buy line will start going down provided the market continues to drop, obviously. 
So you can see that after one year, it did start to catch up with the market by dropping lower and lower and lower. Now, by the way, we don't necessarily wait for this signal in and of itself. We might take a look at daily bow ties, something like the aforementioned first thrust, etc., to look to get back into the market. And I'm sure this was a daily bow tie, if memory serves, on, again, the daily chart. But you can see that if we get into a longer-term extended bear market, this system will begin to catch up. This system is more of a get-out-the-way system than a signal to buy. I think there are other triggers you could use a little bit shorter term to get you in the market, but you definitely want to get out of the market if you have one of these sell signals. By the way, go in and watch if you can't sleep at night. <laughs> I'm gonna steal a joke from Greg Morris. Not about his stuff, but he, he likes to joke kind of in a self-deprecating type, type of way. Uh, the only thing I'd warn is uh, don't operate heavy machinery after watching. But go back to last summer, I think it was around August 25th or 26th, when the market was making all-time highs, I decided to get ahead of market timing and do a show there and call it before the bomb blows up. Because nobody nobody calls me when the market's doing fantastic. When the market implodes and they're down about 30 or 40 or 50%, then they call me up in a bit of a panic. And by then, the bomb has already exploded. Now, shifting gears, I recently got asked to do a presentation for a Chinese forum and they asked me if I would record a presentation for them. And we had a meeting going into it. And they asked me if I could focus on the methodology. And I was telling them that really, you really should focus on the trading psychology and the money management and get that down. And the methodology just comes, not natural, but it's something that everybody, everybody is a setup junkie is where I'm going with that. Anyway, long story endless, they like, no, could you please just focus on the methodology? Well, there's no way for me to just talk about the methodology because the three are intertwined. And really, again, I think it's more important to get your head straight, your head on right, okay? And then wrap your head around the money management. And then the methodology actually comes third. And again, everybody's a setup junkie. So one thing I was thinking about is to keep things simple, as I do, and that's why we call this Trading Simplified, and that's why I trademarked that. And how could I show the trading psychology and the money management in a nutshell? Maybe stick, sneak in a little bit money management and, of course, some trading psychology without making that the entire focus. And my entire methodology is to, and by the way, these are actual cocktail napkins that I had made. And if you ever see me in person, I'll give you a cocktail napkin. <laughs> um, anyway, you want to identify a trend. We're looking for a pullback. And those come in various forms, as you just saw, with something like the bow ties and maybe something like lanyard like pullbacks, which I didn't just show you. But anyway, you wait for an entry. You wait for that strength. Again, as I said earlier, we put in a stop in case we're wrong. We put in an initial profit target where we take half, and then we trail that stop higher and let it widen out over time. So that's, in a, in a nutshell, that's the entire methodology. And this is that aforementioned ARLP, which I'll probably beat that horse on, <laughs> just like I did with CPE a while back. CPE was the 600% 600 gain that we had. So entry there, stop there. We took partial profits as the market began to rally, and then we trail that stop higher over time. So that's the money management in a nutshell. The other thing we do, is we let that stop gradually loosen up over time. There's various ways to do it, but essentially we're just letting it loosen a little bit as the market moves in our favor. And sometimes that just means doing nothing whatsoever, just leaving it where it is for the next day. Now, the getting back to the trading psychology, it's like, well, how can I do trading psychology in a nutshell? And we all have our own little trading psychology, our own little psychology that we think we're different or we're special from everybody else. But in reality, we all have pretty much a shared psychology. Now, it's very hard for me to briefly cover that, but I, thought, I got to think in the best way for you to understand that, that a lot of our psychology is the same is through talking a little bit about neurology. And as I've beaten a dead horse on before, and I've got this from a presentation that Denise Scholl did many years ago, I guess about 10 years ago when I was speaking in San Francisco. Anyway, she said, it's impossible to make a decision, any decision, 
uh, even when you want to have for lunch without emotions and stress. So it requires emotions to make any type of decision and every emotion, every decision comes with emotions and stress. And just think about next time you make a decision. Like right now, I'm pretty hungry while I'm, while I'm recording this presentation. I'd love to go get some fried catfish or fried chicken. But it's like, no, that's going to make me sleepy all afternoon. I'll never get this presentation done. So even something as simple as a lunch decision can have emotions and stress or will have emotions and stress attached. Now, one of the things that I found interesting in re reading a book called The investor's brain is that and this goes back to the research of Damasio and I think it's Descartes era is his book but if you have damage to your your orbital frontal cortex which is the loss avoidance system it, it's where your feelings about losses come from you will take very 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 risky trades in fact you will likely blow up and Damasio's research implies that people need feelings to signal when to avoid losses in risky environments. And again, that's from the investment's brain, investor's brain. And the point there is without feelings or emotions, and by the way, the emotions come from down here, the flight or fight down in the amygdala, amygdala the limbic system, and the lizard brain, and all the other good stuff down here. But without this and this, emotions and feelings, you would not be able to trade. So you need to embrace and accept the fact that you need emotions and feelings in order to trade. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more of this trading psychology in a nutshell over the next coming weeks. And I think it's very important to recap that. And I'd really love to get back into the trading psychology. I know everybody wants to see setups. But there's a lot of very important things you really need to know. And it's probably one of the most important things to know about trading is we're not made to trade and you really need to wrap your head around trade psychology and a little bit of the trading neurology. Well that's my time for this week. I'm going to thank everyone for watching. Again, here's a link if you want more information or if you need to reach me, you can go to this link. Again, thank everybody for watching and may the trend be with you. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.